Today, society uses Christ's name as an excuse for commercial greed, pleasures of excess that lead to death and carnage on our roads. Only when we are brought to a sudden halt do we call out in anguish, Oh my God! Many make a habit of calling God in the eleventh hour. Lord, 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 save me! Now, Christ will respond to our cries of need and fear. But there is a day coming when God will call all evil to a halt, and he will say, Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Those who leave their relationship with God to only when they feel they need Him will cry, Lord, we have done all these things in Your name. Save me! Save me! Christ will say, Depart from me. I never knew you. Why, Lord? I love you. Save me! Save me! The reason, my dear, is... People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. 2 Timothy 3, 2-5 I'm Graham Linden, and I'd like to introduce to you Dennis Jenkins, a well-known educational consultant who specializes in cognition. His main specialty is to help people become more critical and precise in their thinking. Dennis loves the Lord and brings his skills in the Spirit to you today by helping you to understand. How can I become connected to Christ and be sure that I am accepted? Good to meet you. I'm Dennis Jenkins. Being accepted by Christ depends on how you worship, how you adore, and how you relate to the power of the Holy Spirit. At Christmas time, we rush and bustle about getting ready for this great event, Christmas Day. In the shops, Christ's name is sung. His name is on everyone's lips, Christmas. But it's all hollow and meaningless. Yes, there is a form of godliness. Some go to church for this occasion. They love the warm fuzzies they get from the performances, but it's only a shell, empty, having no power in itself. To be honest, it's a waste of time and effort, mostly lining the pockets of the greedy and leading people to carry out empty acts of love. Come with me on an adventure of a lifetime and let's discover together how God wants us to connect with Him. Salvation, worship, adoration and being religious are much misunderstood concepts by many who adhere to the Christian faith. We are told in Scripture, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Acts 16.21 We are told to believe, have faith. If we believe in something, we naturally have faith in it. However, the Scripture then tells us that, Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. James 2.17 What does God want us to do or act on? 
God wants us to act on our connection to Him. God says in Scripture, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 4 and 5 The branches are us. The vine is Christ. As the branch is connected to the vine, the branch is able to respond to the life-giving power of the vine. At this point, the branch is able to grow and develop. Unless our connection is that close, we do not have a life-giving relationship with God. How do we then have such a close connection with Christ? Christ, when he was on earth, used earthly examples to explain heavenly concepts. At this point, I am going to do exactly that. A young person who connects with an actor or singer will study every aspect of the performer's life. Posters will cover every square centimetre on the bedroom wall. The young person will find it a great joy to sit in front of those posters and study how the performer walks, stands, dresses and acts. Every available source of information about the performer is accessed. Audios, videos, CDs, magazines, newspaper articles. This person is carrying out acts of worship and adoration. Worship or adoration is a completely all-consuming devotion to studying that performer. The study results in action, a decision to make changes in one's lifestyle. The scripture tells us, We all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 we change to be whatever we think is most important in our lives. Let's stop there for a moment. What was the process of worship and adoration in that story? First, the young person was attracted to the performer. This young person saw worth or value in that person. This value recognition triggered a process called worship or worship. The recognition of worth led the young person into studying the performer, then liking what was seen, adored that person. So it is with worshipping and adoring God. We must first see worth in him. This value or worth will lead us to study him in every way that we are able. As we get to know God through our study, we will like what we see, which will lead us to adore him. However, with God compared to a performer, we appear to have a problem. Yes, we can get literature on him, the Bible, and read about him, but that is not the same as being able to see him or hear him. We cannot hear soundtracks or videos. Yes, this is all true, but we can do one better. We can have a cyber mind connection with God. With performers and famous people, we can see them, hear them, but we're not able to have their mind. But Christ offers us a cyber mind experience. He invites us to connect mind to mind. We are offered the mind of Christ. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 How can we have Christ's mind in our mind? Well, we are told that God wants a special type of worshipper, so this can happen. A time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in spirit and truth. John 4, 23 and 24 When Christ left this earth, he promised us a very special gift. This gift was what he called the Counselor or the Holy Spirit. The Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. John 14, 26 Since this is the way Christ wishes to teach us, it is strange that so few people consciously connect to this direct communication with God. They believe only prophets and ministers or priests have the right to claim this promise. 
These ideas are not true. You and I are given this gift of direct communication with God through the Holy Spirit. How is God going to reveal himself to us? Will he appear in visions? In outward display of dramatic bodily control? Well, not usually, for Christ said, The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 14, 26 Simply, the Holy Spirit will place thoughts in our mind if we are willing to be taught and prompted. John 14, 26 indicates that this communication is to take place privately and quietly through our mind without fuss, grandeur and display. It is through teaching, through the mind and remembrance. In fact, the Bible was written for the most part in the same way. The Spirit moved on the mind of man who wrote. No prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 God says that if we feel that we lack wisdom, we need to ask Him for it, and He will give it, whoever we are. He does not pick and choose, for he does not set out to find whether the asker is good enough. He gives to all generously without finding fault. This is all found in James 1, 5-8, where it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all, without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. If we ask, we must believe and not doubt. For if we believe enough to ask and pay lip service to wanting God's gift of wisdom through the Spirit, if we doubt God's offer of directly communicating with Him, the Scripture tells us that we are unstable and double-minded. In other words, if you say you agree to God's input into your mind by the Spirit and then believe you cannot directly communicate with God, you say one thing and believe the other. Only people with unstable minds are like this. How many Christians pray for the Holy Spirit, then claim that God does not directly communicate with men and women in this age? Many claim that the ancients were lucky because God manifested himself to them in many dramatic ways. Today, God has given us more access than ever before. We have direct communion through the Spirit. We are able to directly discover God through connecting our minds to his. God tells us that we are unable to understand him or even know him, except we have direct contact through the Spirit. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2.14 Only as we accept the Holy Spirit can we know God in order to appreciate him and adore him. God must be revealed to each individual so that each one of us can value and adore the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. If in our daily life we watch television and often see personalities, we may feel that we know him or her. If someone was to ask us, do you know so and so? Would we say yes without direct communication? No, we wouldn't. It is the same with God. We cannot say that we know him until we meet him through the spirit, mind to mind. If the Holy Spirit is so readily available, what stops so many from receiving it? Get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. James 1.21 In order for us to be able to accept Christ's word through our minds, we must choose to rid our minds of moral filth. The Holy Spirit cannot reside in a mind that chooses moral filth. What is this moral filth? 
people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the form of godliness, but denying its power. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5 Much filth is selfishness, self-centeredness, that prevents us from seeing our need of a direct connection to God. As the text says, having the form of godliness, but denying its power. So many of us call ourselves Christians. Do we just take the name and the form of godliness and deny the power that can come from a direct connection with Christ? Do we say that we are Christians and deny that God can communicate directly with each one of us? If we only have the form of godliness, it is to us that God will say, I never knew you. Away from me. Matthew 7.22 We will protest and say, But Lord, we have done all these things in your name. It's not just our profession of faith that God desires, but he requires us to directly connect to him through the Holy Spirit. This link will allow the lifeblood to flow into us, the branch, from the vine Christ. We are told, without this connection, we are not known by him. What steps can we take in order to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Step 1. Ask God for it. Step 2. Believe that you will receive. Step 3. Have a burning desire to know who God is. Have a passion for meeting Christ personally. Step 4. Read the scriptures to find out more about God. As you do so, Ask God to add to your mind insight and wisdom so that you can really see Him as He is. Step 5. Be continually in an attitude of prayer or communication with God. Ask Him for wisdom in all your daily decisions. Listen to the ideas that Christ plants in your mind. Humbly accept the word planted in you. James 1, 21. Be still. And know that I am God. Psalms 46.10 Don't always be in a rush to make decisions. Be still. Have times of quietness to contemplate the ideas planted in your mind. As you connect with the wisdom and power of God, you'll be able to truly say, Oh, come, let us adore him. May the Holy Spirit be with you.